Every so often, the sports hangover touches on mature topics. Discretion is advised. Gossip, BS, lies, and rumors. This is the sports hangover. I don't know what that means. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. It's not as good as people go. It's the Sports Hangover. I'm j Dog. That's Mike. And I am so sorry for your loss, man. Uh, Jeremy, I, I was sad. I didn't want to believe it. I was getting text messages from... Uh, who, I was getting a text message from uh, Thomas from the Hollywood Speakeasy saying it was in demise. He was talking a lot of shit. I was like, you know what? I have hope. I don't believe that's going to happen. I wanted the AAF to, to live. And he died very quickly. So quickly. Mike was the early adopter. He's talking about the Alliance of the American Football League, by the way. The AAF. Um, You've been so on board with this. Alternate Mm -hmm. football is going to change everything, compete Mm -hmm. with the NFL, get college players. And we got, what, eight games out of the league, and it is folded, gone. People are not getting paid. Um, We have news about different stadiums not getting money for having games there, players not getting paid. It's a bad situation. Yeah, and we're, we're going to have an interview later with uh, the guys from AF Analyze, Derek and Garrett, here on the Hangover Network. I'm excited we, to hear from them. They're the experts. Me, from uh, yes. uh, Not an Expert View, yes, thank God expert. it's over. Thank God this league Jeremy, is over. Because on. I'm telling you, no. you were so on board with it, Mike. Oh, you were so on. into it. And I was just pushing back, pushing back, and I was like, okay, fine. It's an untapped market. Let's invest in it a little bit. Yeah. Let's put some money behind it. And God damn it, we were bamboozled just like Steve Spurrier. Just we like were the bamboozled. Old ball Jeremy, I I remember the night where we came up with the idea. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> on that. No one's doing it. We yeah, can't we were this. so excited. And, and, and that's what the guests are going to come on and talk about. They took over the podcast from us. But I just want to tell the folks out there, when you, when you see something happening in life, in any walk of life, and you think, mm-hmm. it can't really be that bad. It can't, it can't really work out that way. Trust your, your judgment. Trust yourself. Because I thought... Wait, is this going to work? Because the NFL is really popular and college football is popular, but there's a reason it's not 12 months a year, and there's a reason there's an off season, and there's a reason people watch March Madness in March. No, the AFF is going to be great. We got all these coaches, all these players. Trent fucking Richardson was one of the best players in this league. We should have known it was going to fail. Jeremy, Next time Jeremy, you, you think are, something bad cannot happen to it, you're wrong. What did we do with angry. Hillary and Trump? We thought nothing bad could happen. He can never win. And look what we're doing in this I country. Know, it's it's the same I idea. Jared, I, I think the problem with the AAF is it seemed like out of nowhere they appeared and then they disappeared. It was... It, it seemed like a cash grab. I know there's conspiracies around it. I'm sure we'll talk about it later, but I just... The AAF is Trump. Just want to clarify that. It's a it's a money grab, bamboozled, promised something that never existed, propped yourself up. That's not true. That is your league, the AAF. I'm glad it's gone. All right. Let's talk Let's talk <laughs> some NFL, some sports headlines. I got a lot of headlines here. Uh, Jeremy, I, I have audio of this. Le'Veon Bell put out a rap song over the weekend. Got a lot of hate. From a lot of players. You want to you hear a little clip? Yeah, I want to hear I haven't heard this. No, we're not breaking no rules. I got a stone and you fools. I'm working, don't need no tools. They want to do what I do. Money is making me broke. I see that I'm in the news. Anybody what do you think? I like it. It actually you has like a it. good beat, right? Uh, no, it's, it's terrible. It, oh. It's like a <laughs> wannabe future. Come on, Jeremy. You got to know your rap I, game here. I know music better than most. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like it. What's your favorite band again? Nickelback? Uh, sometimes Imagine Dragons, I go back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it might be a tie. He put out a song. People fucking hated it on Twitter. Is he calling I, out players like AB and Ben or what? I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't understand what was I, I couldn't listen to the whole thing. I, I didn't mind it. Le'Veon Bell's on the Jets now, so he has a big rap career ahead of him in Manhattan. 
Well, he must have been doing this in the off season, or like when his season was on, but he wasn't playing. Kind of he had thing. a lot of time on his hands. He could have done he a, lot a lot of podcasts. Of uh, uh, another story I want to talk about in the NFL is yes. Russell Wilson, who has given the Seahawks uh, an I didn't April want to bring it up. 15th deadline. Didn't put it on, didn't put it on the list because <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it. Because you're a Seahawks fan. You love the city of Seattle for so love many it. reasons, at least two of them, or three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so many reasons that you love that city. Russell I Wilson, love, I, yes. even I have a jersey of Russell Wilson. I like, I like the guy, too. The guy's but he great. set a deadline April 15th to extend mm-hmm. his contract. He's only got yes. one year left, and all the quarterbacks are getting paid. He would be a free agent after this season, which seems like a possibility if the Seahawks don't extend him. And there's some trade possibilities. He could be traded to the Giants, maybe the Dolphins, for a few first-round picks if the Seahawks can't work out a deal. I know the Seahawks are out for some draft picks. They don't have many draft Mm. picks this year. Mm. Um, Russell also said he was not going to hold out. Yes, so that's but if he does not get a contract by April 15th, it's possible he will not sign with them at all, and then he will leave in the offseason. So you might as well rebuild and trade him in, in, instead of True. letting him leave. And now, it, it's tough, I feel like, for teams to build around a $100 million player sometimes when you're getting $100 million. Now look at Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't. I wouldn't say Aaron Rodgers has the greatest talent around him, right? Um, true, or else he would have won more quarter, more Super Bowls than Brady. Who else just got a hundred million dollar contract? Who else? A Flacco got a hundred million dollar contract. That, that was a while that, ago. Kirk Cousins know, was a little still, under a hundred million. And then the, it just it just seems like when you get a hundred million dollars, it it doesn't help the team. So either Russell has to structure it like more of like a Tom Brady where he kind of takes a hit because Russell's a brand. He has his own shoes with Nike. He's got all this other stuff. I think yeah. he's selling like mattresses now for some reason. I don't know why. Sounds he good though. I guess, but I'm just saying. I think well, you know if why. You can structure it he, differently. he was always a good sleeper. He never had sex until recently, so yes. I think he just yes, he was always true. a sleeper. He knows a good mattress. The rest of us are doing other things on our mattress. Sure, he knows sure, how yeah, to of get course, yeah, of course. I'm. Uh, I was kind of upset because like, I know don't how want to get Russell. comfortable in Seattle. <laughs> I just don't want Russell to get upset and leave. Uh, are you are you checking off like little jokes you had written down? <laughs> You're like, oh, got that one. Got man. that Seattle joke in. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I think he might leave. And like, what are the Seahawks doing? You got to sign him. He's one of the what six best quarterbacks in the league. That's not changing anytime soon. No, it's um, not. he's exceeded all expectations. You've paid him shitty rookie money for a while now, and yep. you should pay the man. And if you want to rebuild instead, then then trade him next week before the draft. I know. I'm not uh I'm not excited about it. So we'll see we'll see what happens. Yeah. There's a lot of talk. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about these NFC West quarterbacks. So Russell's not the only one. The Cardinals mm-hmm. are in position number one overall pick, NFL draft approaching. They're gonna take mm-hmm. Kyler Murray as we think they should and cut your losses. But I wanna remind people that Josh Rosen isn't going anywhere. They're gonna keep Josh Rosen to push Kyler Murray in competition. There's no reason to uh. sell him short for a third round pick. A lot of viewers have been writing in. The Canadian was asking what to do with uh, Josh Rosen, and we're saying keep Josh Rosen, have him compete with Kyler you, Murray. The book's not closed on him yet. Do you <laughs> So I, I heard a rumor that Obviously, people are interested in Josh Rosen, uh, Rosen, and maybe the Patriots are interested in trading for him, getting, giving them a draft pick for him, doing something. I think it makes sense to get rid of him. If you're already moving on, why hold on to an asset that you're not invested in? Or maybe, hey, maybe he goes up to Seattle. Maybe a little swappy swap. Maybe Seattle swappy gets a first-round pick. You think, Would, you think the Seahawks will help the Cardinals who are in their no, division and so give them Russell? That makes no sense. Uh, so. The Patriots could be an option, but I just don't think it's in the Cardinals' best interest to sell low on Rose and let him get some value, whether it's just in training camp and getting some yeah. preseason games, and then trade him for something else. I do not think he'll be traded before the draft. Speaking of the Patriots... Talk to me. Um... <laughs> I just ruined my joke, but let's play guess that tweet. <laughs> you want? What do you want to play? Oh, <laughs> let's play guess that tweet. It's a good thing I have. I have Give two guess that tweets lined up because I just ah, ruined the first God. one. Um, you probably saw it for the first one. Uh, this one, I'm retiring in my spare time. I'll be tweeting hashtag LFG. Let's fucking go. Uh, was that Tom Brady? Yes, that was Tom Brady yes. on April Fool's Day. Um, that was his first tweet ever. Yeah. Didn't come out with a bang, just like my he's, setup. He's a, he's a little uh, late to the game. Twitter's a dying social network, um, but cool. Good. I'm glad Tom Brady went somewhere. Yep. He's not funny, but he will be the Patriots quarterback for a while longer. Um, yes. 
Here's another <laughs> tweet. Uh, let's try to digest this one. This is a real okay. tweet. Okay. Masturbating to a thought you want to manifest or an idea you want to mm-hmm. create is way more beneficial and fulfilling than watching porn and having that shit program in your subconscious. I mean, this sounds like somebody wild that uh, Antonio Brown, maybe? <laughs> The truth is, I don't know who tweeted it, but oh. uh, it's a disturbing, <laughs> disturbing tweet, and I just wanted to read it on our show. <laughs> um, can we talk about Tony Romo? He wanted uh, ten million dollars to stay at CBS, and I don't think he's going to get ten million dollars. But they should probably pay him ten million dollars. Um, I don't think they have a choice. I think they have to pay him, or else he will lose. They'll lose him to ESPN or Fox, so they have to pay him. But do you think they actually will pay him? Because he would be then the highest paid. Anywhere, right? Like, even people that have been there for a while feel like it's, CBS doesn't do that. CBS doesn't just want to pay people. Um, they're, they're a little older company. I think they're, they have, like, they're an older, older company. The Tiffany Network, the I. You know, I, was, I hate to name drop. You know, I hate to do it. But I was with I Jim Nance just last week. I sent you a picture. You saw uh, it. Oh, yeah. You and Jim. Um, me out. and Jim were hanging out. And he was as cool as a cucumber. If there was anything that he thought, any reason that he thought Romo would be leaving his side and he'd have to bring back some Phil Sims character, he would have been mm-hmm. stressing out. And I can tell you that was the last thing. Jim was doing. I have zero concern about Romo returning. Okay. All right. Well, then that's that's done. Romo will be back. Maybe a higher paid <laughs> announcer. Highest paid. I think he uh, will be, and I think he should be. I have one more thing. Gronk retired. That was before our last show. Gronk retired last week. Uh, that was in our last show. It was in our last show, was it really? Did we, we talk about Gronk said, retiring? Yeah. You're getting old. We talked about your really Fiesta and our so boy. F- and oh, yeah. He's going to come back. Soy Fiesta. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Gronk retired. I'm sad. How he said he's some... going to be dog walking and stuff, <laughs> and like appearing on game shows. Maybe in a movie where he gets paid sixty thousand to be an extra or something. All right, whatever he should. Do uh, let's do some NBA news. NBA news. What do you got, Jeremy? What do you got? I've got a couple stories here. The first one is concerning. Um, the Knicks mm. traded a superstar earlier this year, Christoph Porzingis. Yes. I think they traded him to Dallas or something. He was hurt. Um, apparently, the night that he tore his ACL and messed up his knee really bad, um, he allegedly raped a neighbor that same night. I saw and that. that has just come out, even though the Knicks knew about it, and it's possible that's why they traded him. But not only did the Knicks know about it, Dallas knew about it receiving so he, they all everybody knew about it yeah i don't know what it is i mean obviously all these reports are coming out and it seems kind of weird that it's it's been kind of shut a little bit like shoved under the mat and now yeah. it's appearing uh i didn't think she wanted that much money right didn't she want like 60 grand or something Sixty thousand. yeah or, or i think much. he was gonna pay like for her his her 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 brother's like uh, college tuition, college, or something. which equaled sixty thousand, right? Yeah, so it was kind of like a. But weird it's possible thing. extortion. There's definitely all indications right now are that it's it, they're looking into extortion more than the actual rape. Which yeah, I hope like if that's a real thing, like you should be able to go to jail for that or something, right? You can. I, hope. I, I think I think you can go to jail for that because that's I, awful, and and that's what's happening to. A lot of people who are rich and in power, on one hand, they are taking advantage of women, and that's awful, and it's happening all over the place. On the other hand, there's an opportunity for women like this to possibly extort. So it's a it's a tough situation all the way around. But you're right. All the teams knew about this, so it's I weird. guess he's going to be okay. It's weird. Like, it doesn't seem – it almost seems like a story that went away. Like, it was here for a minute, and then it just kind of, like, fizzled well, out. That's, like, what, not a- that's the definition of the sports hangover. We bring it back. We, we do bring it back. I want to talk about this. Zion Williams expected to get the biggest, most lucrative shoe deal ever. Ever? Ever. Well, it's, next – or close to Jordan and LeBron. It's Zion Williamson, by the way. Zion, yeah, I know. I said Zion. You said Zion Williams. It's fine. <laughs> what? I said Zion. You called him Williams. I called him Williams? He's Williamson. Whatever. If he- <laughs> <laughs> Who cares what I call? I thought I called him just Zion. Who cares if he's gonna get the biggest shoe deal ever? We got to get his name right. Uh, yeah, is but he I gonna have a big W name. on the side? Like the Skechers has the S. Is it gonna be a big W? I don't know. I mean, you think he would go with Nike, but I always, I always like kind of look like well, uh, Under Armour. Like, come on, Under Armour is killing that. it. They have Steph Curry, Bryce Harper right now. They're killing it. But he's not That's gonna go to Nike after that shoe broke and he almost busted his whole leg. 
But you could go Nike. You could do Adidas. You could do. Puma. I'll say he doesn't go to Nike. Can we bet? You take Nike. I take the field. All right. I mean, I kind of think he might go to a, to Adidas, but just kind of depending. But I, I think I think setting yourself aside, like away from LeBron and Michael Jordan and going with a different brand might be better for your brand because he seems like he could be a superstar. Unless you want to be the next LeBron and Jordan. That's true because LeBron's – he's going to be out. He's already like he, – he's missing the rest of the season. He's done. He's all uh, done here. I was going to talk about LeBron here before we play J-Dog Takes On. So LeBron Damn. is resting for um, the, last the rest of the games. season. He's done. Yeah. He's missing the rest of the season, something he's never done. He's going to have this tremendous off season. That's what he says. So he's going to have – He's going to work real hard. All of April, all of May, all of June, all of July, all of August, all of September, and then – Preseason starts in October. That's a long time off. He's going to be healthy and ready to go next year for the first time in a long time. Uh, and I mean, he said he was going to work hard and make himself uncomfortable this off season. But honestly, he's going to be making Space Jam for probably three months out of these. Like he won't even watch the playoffs, I imagine, because he's got to record Space Jam too. So I, I feel like he has a lot of stuff to do not related to basketball. But his body he's won't his, take like, a beating, right? He's not doing no, crazy shit in Space no. Jam. Well, I'm sure he's going to be cracking open a few extra bottles of wine, you know, really taking it he easy. He was doing that during the season. I mean, I he was he was drunk on Instagram the other night. Did you see that? No, I didn't. See he had a he had it wasn't even wine. I think it was a decanter of whiskey, yeah. some some kind of expensive whiskey, what? and he had the camera on the whiskey, and then he oh, would turn the yeah. camera on himself and he would make a face, like a drunk face. Then he would put the camera back on the whiskey, <laughs> then put it back on his face. He's going back and I forth, back it. and forth, but he never said anything. He's just making faces. So I love it. It's pretty good. Lit. Get drunk. Good, good for you. All right, I mean, he's living the good life in L.A. That's that's what I want. Come on out. J. Don takes on. Stick around, by the way. Uh, after J. Dog takes on, we have some guests joining us. And yes, then we, we have our Bachelor Bachelorette Party Final Four results. Mm-hmm. So we're going down to the final matchup, the championship game, just like NCAA. We're going to get to that in a second. But I am taking on... Tell me. Coach Mike Shashevsky of Duke. And you mentioned my boy Zion Williams or Zion Williamson. He did <laughs> not use him late in that game <laughs> against Michigan State, and they lost the game. I thought Coach K has lost a step, and this may have been his last stand because they were the best overall team with the best overall player. And that is a true disappointment to not only miss the Final Four, to win on a buzzer beater against UCF to win on a buzzer beater against Virginia Tech and then to lose to Michigan State with the best player with the best team I'm taking on Coach K for doing a bad job being past his prime he's a legend he's one of the best ever but I think it's time for him to go can I say that what I I feel like the kids know what to do and how much coaching really because I've never been on a basketball team I've been on like a hockey team and there's only so much that you can coach in a way like and motivate like what is the factor that, yes, maybe the team wasn't as good. They were relying on Zion so much. So it's like, what's the move? Oh, just give it to Zion. He'll run in there. And, you but know. they never did. There's there's a crazy stat about this kid, R.J. Barrett, who's also really good on Duke. And they have three players that are probably going to be in the top five of the NBA draft. So no yeah. knock on him. But there's a stat in like the last minute of games this year. He's like 0 for 8 or 0 for 10. And Zion has very few shot attempts in the last minute of a game. So this kid's always taking it. He did the same thing against Michigan State. He mm-hmm. missed it. And Zion never got the ball when, truthfully, you want the ball in your best player's hands, just like any sport. If you understand football sure. or hockey or baseball, you want your best player up in that moment. But don't you? I, sometimes I think it's like, yes, you do. Like, you want LeBron or Michael Jordan holding the ball. But. These are also college kids, and like you, maybe you come up with a better scheme. I don't know. I, I don't want to blame the coaching. I almost want to. Zion looked tired. He's a big boy running around there. I didn't think he looked tired. You didn't think so? I felt like he was like the movements. He's not very fluid. Well, he looks with, fat all the time. Yes, but I. He's I don't a know. wide body. I, I know we reported that last week after I saw him did. in person, but he's a wide body. Oh, so how big? How big was he? Like compared to like a normal? Because on TV, you can't really tell because the perspective of it. He's like – it's like when a, um, a Volkswagen bug is in one lane and then um, right, the right next truck. to it is a monster truck. Okay. And you like That's see them next like. to each other. That's what it's like because like every okay. other NBA player is a Volkswagen sure. and then he's a monster truck. Yeah, because they're like long and lean his, and his, And it's not like – he's not tall looking because he's so wide looking. Yeah. Like Taco Fall was tall and slender even though he weighed 300 pounds. He's not going to NBA, right? He's going somewhere else? Since we last spoke, Mike, Tell me. we are hearing reports that he might be a second 
round pick what? and end up in the NBA and maybe they'll try to develop him. I just think one person falls on him wrong, all his bones are broken. Taco? Yeah. He, yeah. It's hard to knock down a 315-pound man, though. Yeah, yeah, He'd be the I, heaviest I player guess. in NBA history, I think. But it's like 315 pounds, like all really, really tall. I feel like it'd be kind of easy to knock what, down. What do we know about Zion? I'm not locked into the NBA lottery. Could he end up on the Lakers? Honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know. The lottery's weird how they, like, seed it. Like, you get more uh, lotto tickets in the little ball machine for them to pull from. So, like, if you're the worst team, I think you get uh, 5% of the balls or some amount of balls in there. Because it's like a lotto machine that they just raffle off. The, I the f- Yeah, it is a weird system. The funny thing about our show is we... T- tend to talk more NBA in October and November than when the season actually matters, <laughs> which is right now. So I'm just checking the standings. The Lakers have the 10th best record in the West. So, th- so they'll have a chance by missing the playoffs to win the lottery, yeah. but it might be like a 2% chance. Meanwhile, a great story, and I know people know this, is the New York Knicks have the worst record in the NBA, so they're the favorite to get yes. Zion. Um, just looking at it here, the Cavs have a really good chance at Zion. I think that yeah. that's kind of a cool story, right? I guess. Do they deserve another one? No, I don't think so. I another think give legend? it to New York. New York's been really bad for a really long time. Even the Rangers are so bad. I don't know if you saw this, uh, but the other night the Rangers were playing the Devils, and the whole stadium they were they're at home in New York for the Rangers game. Everybody just kept chanting, "We both suck. <laughs> we both suck." Because both teams are terrible this year. So That's it's so just, sad. It's really really sad. All right, let's do. Uh, let's get into an interview. We're gonna call. Derek and Garrett from AAF Analyzed. All right, now we're bringing on the guys from the former AAF Analyzed show, Derek and Garrett. Hello, How are you guys doing? Well, uh, sad. Uh, great, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be like a friend diet or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, well, when I, I very heard, quickly. You, yeah, you know the scene in Anchorman when he's in the telephone booth after Baxter gets punted off the bridge? And he's in a glass case of emotion. That's pretty much where I am right now. <laughs> so really how sad. did you guys, were you, because I know it was kind of like a leading up to it. Like first the NHL owner got involved and gave $250 million. And then the like following two weeks, it was like, hey guys, like news reports are coming out. It might be folding. It might not be folding. And then Monday the news hits. It's officially suspended all action. But it seems like they kept on. Some of the employees, like the the staff of the uh... yeah, they did actually because part of the email that said that they were suspending all football operations leaked, and it said at the bottom mm. of it that they're keeping a very small staff on hand to see if they could maybe get another investor or something that'll keep the league alive. So who knows? Maybe we'll be back up and running in no time. But and the I, that, I would not. I would not have been one of those investors because we're hearing that these people have not been getting paid. Some of them for a long time, and definitely not into the future. I mean, I have some breaking news here Whoa. that Jeremy, so the champion. Orlando, the Orlando Apollos, obviously the best team in in this AAF champions. league. I would call them champions. Well, they I'm glad you said it. that, Mike. We have breaking news. If you can hmm. hit that for me. Wow, what is, what's going on, Jeremy? So FanDuel has declared the Apollos as AAF champs, and they will pay out everyone who had an AAF future bet on the Apollos. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's wow, that's pretty good, because I, I saw some sports books saying that since there was no action, they'll just get their money back on all of them, but I'm glad the uh, the Apollos are the official champions, Jeremy, your, your hometown. My hometown. So that's $10,000 they have to pay out, which shows you not many future bets were made. No. But my question to you guys, so this is the issue. No one got paid in all of this. So WFTV, local uh, station here in Orlando, is saying that UCF, where the Apollos played six games, they never paid them. They never paid UCF to use their stadium, and they signed a deal for a million dollars and just never oh. paid them. Wow. <laughs> oh, what? boy. How do, you, how do you let your stadium get used if no one ever gave you money for it? Oh, you're turning the tables on you. Oh, I like that. I like that. All right, so, I mean, uh, guys, do you? I know you were talking before the show. Uh, you say you might have a conspiracy theory here. That yes. Give it. I'm. I'm all for conspiracies. Garrett, give it to me. All you. So, yeah. So pretty much what I saw on Twitter mm-hmm. was that. So the AAF has that Alliance app that yeah. um, does the player tracking, the ball tracking, and mm-hmm. it allows for like kind of in-game gambling stuff. So 
what people are saying is that the NHL and particularly Tom Dundon wanted that like app technology for the gambling and things like that. And so he just went into the AAF, gave them, you know, the money for $250 million. And as soon as he found out they weren't going to get an NFL partnership that which he thought they were going to be able to do and he saw no potential, he had gotten what he wanted, which was the technology for the app. Mm. So he got out of there. And what kind of confirms this is the fact that I think just yesterday, the uh, NHL announced, it was today, the NHL just announced 2019 to 2020, they will be instituting player tracking and puck tracking, as well as a new gambling system for the NHL. So (laughs) So this is a giant (laughs) ploy. Yeah, what some people are thinking is it wasn't even Dundon. Some people are even speculating that Dundon took money from all a ton of different NHL owners oh, and the two hundred and fifty oh. million dollars was everybody's money. Damn. And they put it into the AF. Now I can't NHL confirm that against and, the AF. Yeah, and it's a pretty big accusation, so I would take my words with a grain of salt, but No, that's the, not what we do on this show. We yeah, jump no, to conclusions. We don't? Okay, well no, we're jumping right to conclusion. <laughs> you hear NHL, you heard it here first. <laughs> the NHL didn't want the AAF competition during um what would be some of their playoffs. Yeah. And they went and they tanked the AAF. So could this also be because it seems like a huge amount of money just to get some kind of app developed, like two hundred fifty million dollars. I'm sure they get the NHL could have made some sort of. Yeah, that's that's probably the weakest part of this. Like I feel for that amount of money, and it might have been something where he did well, see potential. The AF had patents, didn't they? They Those. might, have, yeah. If it was something where they had the patents, and as soon as he becomes a majority investor, he has control of those patents. Then, ah, then it's all okay, easy. all right. I, so, I listen. I, I believe it. I something went weird because it seemed like this league was set up to success. Like right, they, like they signed contracts like three years. Players are going to be getting paid on a scale from whatever fifty thousand to a hundred thousand uh, dollars. I thought it was going to be great, and I like right before the season started, I watched like how the XFL failed and all the mistakes they made. And it's weird how the AF it didn't even complete a full season. It just just sure. ended just abruptly yeah. ended and it was kind of i'm i'm scared for the xfl now because i was really excited yeah. about the xfl too yeah yeah I have, it's weird yeah it's not a good situation at all um because it did seem like they had everything prepared they knew what they yeah. were going to do but um i mean if you read tweets and stuff guys are getting kicked out of their hotel rooms oh um for like the, not pain or just like they're getting rowdy well, uh, just no. like the UCF stadium, apparently their hotel rooms were never paid for, and now oh. that the league's not a thing, the yeah. players are left with nowhere Derek, to go. What you say about what you say about the food too during the season or whatever? Oh, apparent. There's reports coming out now that during the season that mm-hmm. they went from only having players and coaches being fed on team planes to not even giving them meals. They only got thirty dollars <laughs> stipends that they could use wherever they please. I guess so. That's not enough. That's barely a dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a it's grown football great. player, that's not enough. Those and boys another thing me. that I keep thinking about is whenever you go back and you watch that opening speech that they gave about the AF, that big, giant introductory film, mm-hmm. and they said on that stage that whether or not they made money, they had enough in it that it could go three years yeah. at least. And here we are eight weeks in and – there's nothing else. So you guys were passing the blame a little bit on the this NHL guy who came in, which is understandable considering this conspiracy theory is probably a fact. Conspiracy. But yeah. doesn't some blame lie with Charlie Ebersol, who never had enough money to truly get this thing started and then needed someone to come bail him out in the first couple of weeks of the season? And then, if your theory is true, he trusted a guy to come in and steal his technology and kill his own league. So I, I feel like some blame lies on his shoulders. No, I, I totally yeah. agree. I think... I mean, I liked Charlie when I read about him, and of course I like Bill Polian because I think he was a great GM and everything, but I just think they they got kind of bamboozled. I think they went in over their head. They got in over their heads. Um, it sounded like Charlie had everything under control when he gave that speech, but I guess you got to sound like that uh, if you're going to get people to buy into your league. But it is strange that he would have to take this money, that he would be willing to give it to somebody, and it seemed like it didn't sound like there was much build up to the deal either. It was like... As soon as they found an investor, they yeah. went with him. So, and do you guys think that there's any percent chance that the league goes to season two next year if they get some funding? Because it seems uh, like they left it open to like, hey, there might be a second season if we can get money. 
Yeah. I don't know. The publicity was really bad. It's really bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all of the teams have sent out like thank you letters to the fans. They've posted on their Instagram like thank you. Mm. Um, so it would be very awkward. Yeah. To come back as well. Yeah. It'd be like, oh, we're back, and everyone would well, be like, if you want to talk about awkward, there's players calling him out on Twitter now. Steve Spurrier, the obviously the head coach of the Apollos, was talking about how he was led to believe everything about this alliance and he feels lied to and that nothing was very truthful. And whenever your top head coach is saying that, it's going to be an awkward resume if you're bringing him back. Yeah, yeah that would be, be, be tough to do. There's no reason to bring it back. But but one group of people who is coming back are Derek and Garrett because AAF Analyzed might be disappearing, but the XFL is just around the corner and you guys love alternate is, football, right? It doesn't matter who is it true. is. Let's just keep it going. That's very yeah. true. We're going <laughs> to give ourselves a little plug here. Um, we are still going to make shows. Okay. Uh, we have a couple ideas in the works. Me and my other friend are thinking about maybe covering the 2020 election when that rolls around as Love maybe it. a younger perspective on that. Um, that wouldn't be till November or whatever. But, yeah, we're trying to expand our little the election has D&D. begun, guys. We can start that now. Yeah, we can start that now. Um, the Our little <laughs> D&D productions is going to try to, you know, come out with some other shows. We were planning on doing it anyway, but I guess now this kind of opens us up. And yeah, you got extra AF time. was a way for us to get our voice out there. So hopefully yeah. we did that we're well also, enough that we AF Analyzed is not canceled right now. We're yes. still going to make a couple more episodes. No we're one's going to get paid for it, recap. but you're going to do a few more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we'll, we will we'll do, do a season recap. And yeah. We'll do, do season, season awards. See what yeah. kind of well comes still out do of that. It, so probably well, have guys, an episode was, out on it, Friday. It was great having you for the uh, the season or whatever whatever it was, um, and we look forward <laughs> to everything that you're going to bring to uh, to the, to this year and to whatever else podcast you're going to do. We're excited for it. Somehow yeah, you guys did 18 it. episodes before the league was canceled, so props to yeah. you on getting that many in. There wasn't even that many weeks, so thank you for uh, being part of the Hangover Network, and we're not going yeah. away. We want you to continue, so thanks for all you've done. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no problem. See ya. See ya. All right, thanks to those guys for joining us. Lots of perspective, and they're going through a tough time, so reach out yeah. and send them their condolences I'm, if you so uh, have it in you. I know you are too, but I'm okay with all it. All right. Uh, Mike, this is big. This is huge. Because we've been teasing it all of March, and now it's April 3rd, so it's time, it's time to reveal the final four results, and we will now set up our championship matchup. Where is our favorite Canadian's bachelor party going to be? What are the people choosing on the best destination? So over 60% of the people in the U.S. I thought you were going to say 60,000 voters. Yes, over 60,000 voters voted in. And for our U.S. matchup, the final two in the U.S. were Park City, or any ski location, against Seattle. The votes came in, and over 60% of the people have chosen Seattle. Wow. Seattle is a winner. Seattle. Um, a, a threesome dream is alive in the city of Seattle. I am the, so excited to bring you and our mutual friend back there. The next international destination was Vancouver versus Montreal. And Montreal takes it with over 60% of the votes. Good. I'm glad we got some separation because yeah. Seattle's next to Vancouver. We could have yeah, just combined could, them and yeah, done the same trip. But I'm glad Montreal, um, never been, never thought about going, but apparently it's on the eastern side yes. of Canada. Yeah, north of New so York. So we do have an east and west. Uh, and people um, are excited. It's uh, right now on the website. You can go to the hangover.network. The polls are open. Vote for the final, the championship round. Where will this bachelor party happen? Or where's the greatest destination for a bachelor party? I think that's what we're getting down to. Yeah. And people don't want the normal, everyday Las Vegas. It's, it's really stunning, isn't it? Because Vegas, South Beach, Nashville, Austin. All gone. Not factors. All gone. Cabo, Tulum, um, Rio de Janeiro. Yes. Not factors <laughs> not, at all. Not factors here <laughs> at all. We have Montreal versus Seattle. Vote now. I love it. Go to the hangover.com. Network and vote. All right, we're going to wrap Results it up. next week. Guests next week on the Winning City. We'll have an expert on. We'll have like the Minister of Tourism of Montreal or something. We'll bring our Canadian and- friend on or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he could do that. True. Here's what I found. Here's some news for food news. All right, I have some food news. Jeremy, it is uh, summertime. 
almost. It's it feels like summertime here in LA. It's been eighty degrees and sunny and and beautiful out. Uh, Cu- Cupcake Wines has just introduced half bottle cans of wine for f- six dollars, I think, and you can buy it now. Oh. This isn't a new thing, but all the trendy brands now are jumping on board. Can wine, easy to transport. Great because you just crack it open and it's a fresh can of wine. You can go. It's a half can. You're saying? Oh, it's a, it's a full can, but it's a half bottle inside the can. Wow. Yeah, I, I love it. And for only six dollars, it's very affordable. Yes. Now I think we should get um, a free sample sent to us of just course. to try it out. So I'm super excited about that. I love all the new like fun things that come out summertime. Now I don't I don't go to this place <laughs> often. It's only April. A lot of folks are. Listen, still it is. It's full on summer here, Jeremy. I, I'm in <laughs> summer mode. I'm going to the beach. I don't believe it because I was out there a few months ago and it was the shittiest weather. I might never go back. It rained so much this season. It's it's yeah. insane. So uh, I don't go to Burger King often, but Burger King has just introduced Ever? the Impossible Burger, the meatless burger. It's like a <laughs> vegan burger. I'm kind of excited <laughs> about it. I, I cannot to, see the vegans flocking to Burger King. I can't see it. I'm gonna, I want to try it out. The You're impo- going to try it? The Impossible Burger does give me a little gas. Um, I always love Wait, you already tried it? Well, they, they have Impossible Burger. It's like a brand of uh, fake Meatless oh. burgers. So they're at yeah. Umami Burger, stuff like that. Fine dining restaurants. So it's like an expensive patty that they brought on. And actually tastes really good. And then you can still get like the fries and the junk food with it. Of and course. just be a normal fast food person for one day at a time. Of course. I, I'm working on my abs, so maybe I'll do it after. Abs are coming in. You've it's lost so much weight on keto. You're still on keto, right? I'm, so no I'm more of like a, I cheat once a week now. Good. You brought some sanity back. Yeah, yeah. I had to bring some back because it was really tough going out to any do anything, really. Um, I'm glad you did. And I'm glad um, Burger King cooks their burgers on the grill. So it is flame that broil. broiled. Is that what they call yeah, it? Yeah, flame broiled, Jeremy. You know. Wow. You're, you're a Chick-fil-A I guy. My fast so. food. You, you, I know my fast food. Yeah. By the way, yeah. shout out Barstool. You guys suck for doing a fast food bracket. We not only Can't invented it. brackets, we invented... Uh, fun brackets, yeah. and we have done fast food, we've done hangover food, we've done candy, now we've done bachelor party locations, and for them to follow us years later sad. is bullshit. It's, it's, it's bullshit. Kind of sad. It's, it's really sad. Um, okay. Get your own idea, guys. They, did, they do have Chick-fil-A in the Final Four, so they got it right. Okay, still- at least they got it right. Our, our, obviously, our <laughs> listeners are much better voters. Do you remember what won our hangover food bracket? I think, was it like chicken wings or pizza or was, or it, no, chicken was it a burrito? Or pizza or tacos or burrito? I think it was a burrito. I don't remember these things, but it was one of those things. It was one of those things. All right. Uh, good show. Go to hangover.network. Vote now. The polls are open. A lot of great articles up there, too. Thomas from the Speakeasy just wrote uh, a great article on the streaming wars. That's up there right now. Uh, lots of great stuff. Swag. I'm putting up new swag every single week, so check the website for that um and then the af guys as well thanks for coming on the show they will continue to do a few more shows uh i think it's uh, sponsor sponsor kind of wants them to continue on a few more shows <laughs> you know they gotta they gotta earn it so they'll they'll still be doing a few shows just wrapping up the season and maybe switch over to uh the xfl next season we never know if we don't get arrested or blessed our views hopefully we're back next week